Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask an Author. Today I'm delighted to have the beautiful Jane Smith with us. Welcome Jane. Hi, thanks for having me Michelle. Hi everybody. I'm so excited to um, find out about your latest release but before we do that can you tell me a little bit like when you were a kid is this something that you've always wanted to do? Did you like books as a kid? I loved them. I always have been a big reader and I, one of my strongest memories as a little kid is having my dad reading Dr. Seuss books to me. We always used to really enjoy that word play. And also, um, I love the Famous Five books. They were yeah, anything by Enid Blyton, but especially Famous Five. I know, um, I've still got all of my Enid Blyton books. Yeah. Oh, I just <laughs> it. And Cat in the Hat was my brother's favourite book. I think he can still recite it. Yeah. <laughs> I also remember um, at primary school, we had a, I mean, we had a teacher librarian and she must have read us dozens of books, um, but two really stood out and really strongly still. And one was um, Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, just blew me away when she read that to us. And the other, I think it must have been in grade seven, Pastures of the Blue Crane by his bud friends me. It was just the most beautiful book and that, yeah. I still remember that. And um, was that the one where you made the paper cranes? No, was no, it wasn't. It was set in Marillumba. And I remember as as an adult going to Marillumba and feeling like I'd been there before because the atmosphere that she'd evoked in, the, in that book was so strong. It just, yeah, it was uncanny. Isn't it funny how it stays with you, though? Like, yeah. And, yeah. it, and, and it might not necessarily even be the book. It could be just you needed to hear that at that time mm. in your life and as a kid. Yeah, and I couldn't remember the name of it. I could remember the name of the, ma the main character. She had a really unusual name. So, you know, 30 years later when the internet came along and I was able to Google it and find out the name of the book and found a copy of it in a local library. So, yeah. I'm going to have to look that up. I'm going to have to find that one. Mm. Beautiful book. <laughs> but, Tell me about your book. Like, where do you get your ideas from? Uh, does some of it come from those, you know, childhood memories, or is is this something new that's come to you? Yeah, no. I well, all my books so far, um, the ideas have come from historical stories because you know, really, I'm interested in history, and I just think there are so many amazing stories just waiting to be told. Um, so I like. I like using historical stories as a basis because that's a it's a framework that's already there and I just want to bring it to life and flesh it out. So it's not like starting with a blank page. There's there's already an, a germ of an idea. And um and I find that one thing leads to another. So I had written um this um this series, Tommy Bell Bush Ranger Boy, a couple of copies there. This is the first one in it. And one of them, it's a little boy who goes back in time and has adventures with bush rangers. And in one of the books, this one here, book seven, The Runaway, he's at his friend's cousin's farm and her name is Carly. And I just really liked her character. I just had written her as a really feisty, no nonsense, um, like really strong girl. And I thought, wow, it'd be great to give her a series of her own. And so that's how I came up with the idea for. Um, Carly Mills Pioneer Girl, which is these four so far. Um, so Carly Mills goes back in time and has adventures with women who change the world. So yeah, I just do find that one thing just leads on to another. That's amazing. Mm. And um, with this book, I mean, was it something, like you said, that came naturally to you or were there bits of it that you really had to work through? Um, I find, um, well, with with the whole series, it's good. I've got that framework, but the women who, who are the, because she, she meets women who change the world in a different way in each book. And the latest book is this one, The Lady with the Lamp. So she's meeting Florence Nightingale in that one. Um, and the difficulty, I think, is that these women had such full lives and did so many amazing things, but I want these to be like short, sharp, easy reads so I can't you know I'm not writing an in-depth biography of their whole life so the hard bit really is just pulling out the really adventurous bit or the bits that show something really significant about them so um yeah it's not it's starting with the framework is a great start but there's a lot more 
thinking that absolutely, goes on there. Absolutely. So tell us a bit more about this latest book. Um, well, the, late, the first three were all Australian women, but I've branched out international with this one. So Florence Nightingale, some of you might know, is also known as the mother of modern nursing. So in her day, um, she was around in the 19th century. She, um, it wasn't respectable for women to be nurses. Um, and she came from a wealthy family. So being a nurse meant that you would be mixing with the lower classes. And that was just yeah, not really the done thing. It wasn't really respectable for a woman to have a career at all. Um, but her first, the, the first thing that, that she wanted to do was to be a mathematician. She loved statistics, um, but that was just like, there was no question a lady could not be a mathematician. So then she went for the next um, option, which was nursing. Um, but her family would have preferred for her to just socialize and have a nice, um, you know, career bringing up children and supervising the house staff. But that wasn't enough for her. She really wanted, she was searching for depth and meaning in life. And so she became a nurse and she went to the Crimean War and looked after the soldiers in the hospital there. And then she came back and did a huge amount to improve public health. So she was a really fascinating character. And um, one of the things I really like about writing these books is that these women, they were women who made big changes in the world. So naturally they were strong women with interesting personalities. And so it's been really fun to try and bring their personalities to life and you know, show them as they were. Um, and she was a really interesting one to do. Mm. And tell us more about, about the main character. Yeah, Carly Mills. Um, she comes from a little place in Queensland called Apis Creek, um, just west of Rockhampton. Um, she comes from there because that's where <laughs> Tommy was visiting when he met her. Um, she's a country girl, but she's at boarding school in Brisbane. And she, before she goes to boarding school, she meets a family friend called Dora. Um, Dora is her mother's best friend's daughter. And Dora is going to her school as well. Um, so they become friends and they go on their adventures together. Um, they also meet a girl at boarding school called Simone, who's a bit prickly and um, seems like a bit of a bully at the start, but they get to know her a bit better as time goes on. So that relationship will evolve through the series. But in the first book, which is this one, A New World, um, Carly's in Sydney with Dora and they're at a, a museum and they're just, the museum is discarding some things it doesn't want anymore. And they find this shawl. I have made one to a school visit. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing it was supposed to be <laughs> off-white but the illustrator painted it made it orange on the cover so it's orange now yeah <laughs> just much, illustrators much do that like they just do that you just gotta roll with it <laughs> so i've already made this so i had to dye it orange <laughs> anyway okay. so when they put it on their shoulders it sends them back in time and so they have to keep it on when they take it off. They go back to the present. So that's how they go backwards and forwards in time. And um, so that way they can see, they have adventures that sort of parallel mm. their modern experiences. And yeah, they can visit their historical figures at different stages through their life without having to live their whole life with them. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm, I'm having flashbacks of Outlander here. <laughs> That's amazing. It's like Outlander for kids. Um, I love it. So what I, I know you you just love the historical fiction aspect of it, uh, but what's what's the best part of, about what you do? Um, yeah, that's a difficult question because there are so many things I like about it. Um, one of them is, one of the things I like about being a writer is just the freedom that Freedom to wear my own boots to work, if it's a yeah. day. <laughs> and the creative freedom to create you know, new worlds and new people. But I do. People often think of writing as a, a very solitary occupation, and it is. But it also gives me the opportunity to communicate in really positive ways with people all around the world, and um, especially with the historical research I do, because I do try and um, dig pretty deeply. You, you might not see it in a 100-page in a book, but um, there's a lot of work that goes into finding out the history. And that involves writing to like archives, libraries around the world, 
Um, also, I write books for adults that have a lot more um, content in them and a lot more research. And also writing to experts and descendants of some of the people. And so it's um, we can let's have these great interactions um, from you know, all around the world. And they often continue after the book is over. And I get messages from people um, through my website. And yeah, it's, it's great. Some who, are, who I've um, helped, who have helped me with my research, but also just people who've read the books. Um, so I really enjoy that side of it. Yeah, it's nice amazing. interactions with people. Yeah, absolutely. It, it makes it feel a bit more like a, a, a two-sided conversation, doesn't it? As an author, mm -hmm. sometimes it can be a little bit like, I wonder if anybody's listening to anything I'm saying, but I love that you get yeah. that feedback. That's, That's amazing. And um, for those of uh, uh, those viewers who are watching and who are thinking, oh, I'd love to get my hands on those, where's the best place for them to grab some copies, especially of the latest book? Um, well, you can get them online um, from places like Booktopia or through my website, it'll lead you to Booktopia. Um, a lot of bookshops have them as well. And if they don't, you can always ask. Uh, I live in Toowoomba and my local bookshop, the book tree always stocks them. Um, so, but yeah, most bookshops can get them in. Yeah. And, and if some, somebody wants to contact you, what would be the best way that they could do that? They can go to my author website, which is www.jamesmithauthor.com. Um, Carly Nils has got a website of her own too, and they can people can go in there and do activities and find out more about the historical characters and there are quizzes and colouring in and everything. So, and that's just www.carlynilspioneergirl.com. Beautiful. Thank mm. you so much. I, I I can't wait to go and get my copy. <laughs> <laughs> amazing so thank you so much for taking the time and and coming sharing the story behind the story today and i'll make sure that I, I pop those links in the comments as well so what's next for you are there more adventures um yes there's another one uh another carly mills book coming out not exactly sure when yet but it will be featuring amelia Earhart. so that one is that's going to be a really fun one because she was an amazing woman and her she had such an adventurous life yeah. Very exciting one, that. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, thank you so much again, Jane, for joining us today. And I can't wait for the release of this book. Have you got it there again? Yeah. Um, a Lady of the Lamp. Here you go. Lady of the Lamp. Thank you so much. And I can't wait for your next book. Thanks, Michelle.